Hey everybody and welcome to Lex's World and I sorta of can't believe it's taken me so long to talk about RO or reverse osmosis water since quite a few out there use it in your gardens and quite a few of you have asked me about it especially among the 420 club members it's a big topic both of questions and of troubleshooting issues. RO is by far the most commonly used water purification method among those growers that use any sort of water purification. And basically it's just a machine that separates dissolved solids from your water as water passes through it. So should you bother with it? There's a few angles to inspect this and I hope you hear me out on all of them before you make up your mind. In my opinion, it's not a question of whether you need RO, because generally the answer is no, you don't need it, but rather under what circumstances might RO make sense. Because there are some, it's just that they don't apply to most people that are growing a personal grow in a fully developed country, which is the bulk of my viewers. First, you have to understand what RO water does precisely, so pay attention to this list. Reverse osmosis will remove common chemical contaminants, meaning metal ions and aqueous salts, including sodium, chloride, copper, chromium, and lead, and it also reduces arsenic, fluoride, radium, sulfate, calcium, magnesium, potassium, nitrate, and phosphorus. There's some noteworthy ones in there for those of you who uh, paid attention. So in other words, yeah, RO cleans the water of a lot of undesirable chemicals, some of which are in the water at all or in it in unusual amounts due to human interference, but in doing so, an RO system also has to remove a lot of chemicals that plants use and partially get from their water. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, phosphorus, but also more obscure nutrients that are useful to cannabis in tiny amounts, like copper. We can get into a big debate about the minutia of all that, but my point is that by using RO, the price you pay is you're messing with your water and nutrient uptake in the plant, taking away nutrients that would otherwise be included with plain water. And this may result in unintended consequences and the experiencing of nutrient deficiencies that are otherwise pretty rare, like copper deficiency. It's uh, a particular chemical that your plant does use a whole lot of, but if there's zero of it provided, yeah, you might get copper deficiency. So there's risks involved in switching to RO. Also, please bear in mind that whenever you go against the normal evolution of a plant, which was to use normal water that fell from the sky, which was full of all sorts of stuff, you're venturing into slightly murky territory. Now, the obvious counter by RO enthusiasts is, well, water's changed. Water ain't what it used to be, and the water where I live is pretty polluted. Well, my question to those folks is, how polluted? You need to make a judgment about your own water quality. And to give you some benchmarks, distilled water has zero parts per million of dissolved solids in it. Reverse osmosis water has roughly 20 to 30 parts per million of dissolved solids in it, depending on the RO system, which means that it has 20 to 30 milligrams per liter of dissolved solids. Now, as for normal tap water, that's got a big range to it. But if your tap water is very clean, you can get readings of slightly below 140 parts per million, all the way to about 230 parts per million. To me, and I judge things by a Canadian standard, this is clean water. However, in many places around the globe, tap water comes in at around 250 ppm, and 300 ppm happens too. Any higher than that, like going into the 3 to 500 range, then yes, then you can truly say that your area has water with high dissolved solids, water that isn't particularly natural or clean, 
water that's hard. And at that point, you should consider the benefits of cleaning your water with RO before you water your plants. Taking out all the unwanted chemicals, even if it means you're going to make up for the wanted ones another way. There will be a net benefit to keeping your plant watered with clean water. By the way, if your tap or rainwater is well above 300 ppm, you may want to use RO for your drinking water too. Just my opinion. If you want to know how to measure the ppm of your water, you just need a total dissolved solids meter. They're pretty cheap. I'll link to them in the video description. And speaking of the description, I'll also put a link down there to TNB Naturals, makers of disposable CO2 systems and sponsor of this episode. Anyways, the other situation aside from unclean water where you'd want to take on a reverse osmosis system is if you're looking to achieve a very tough botanical goal, like if you're growing for weight or if you're a breeder. With the RO system installed, you'll likely need a micronutrient solution to add the things the reverse osmosis removes, but you'll also have a very high level of control over what's in your water, and you can easily and without interference measure what happens when you add in a certain amount of, let's say, copper, or calcium, or bat guano to a strain, or whatever it is you're experimenting with. In other words, RO can be a great tool in removing confounding variables and allow you to make good decisions about other stuff. Not to mention that if you figure out the micronutrient issues and your plants are healthy, you can also rest easy in knowing that they are getting very pure water in them as well. So yeah, there you go. If you got something to achieve or have dirty water, try RO. But for the casual grower with access to decent quality water with low PPMs, don't bother with RO, just use tap water. Bear in mind, an RO system can still run a couple hundred bucks and involve installation. That's the summary in a nutshell. If you still want to check out an RO system, I'll link to some in the video description. And if you don't want to miss any more of my episodes, just be sure you subscribe and hit that like button. And we'll see you all next time on Lex's World.